Well, it's Tip Tuesday and I am Lorraine Brock with Get Organized. I am the owner of Get Organized, a professional organizing company that services the Dallas-Fort Worth, Oklahoma City area and East Texas Tyler area. And I'm as always excited to give another tip on another topic. So every Tuesday, if you don't know, this is your first time, I bring you real practical and sometimes funny organizing tips about your home, business, and life. Last week, we talked uh, about getting money for your clutter versus donating it. And I think we had some really good uh, comments. I think we also had some really good content that I spoke about as well. Today, we're going to just expand on that a little bit more and talk about estate sales and garage sales specifically. Let me get started. Now, my experience with estate sales uh, for the first few years of Get Organized, we actually did estate sales. We have never done garage sales as a company, but as an individual, I have put on many garage sales in my lifetime and think I uh, am very, very good at them. Specifically on estate sales, I think you really need to, again, like we talked about last week, look at the effort that you're going to give versus the price gain. Now, state sales and garage sales, let's talk about the difference between the two. Many times you're really under city ordinances of how many estate sales or garage sales you can do. So that's pretty much similar. You need to check with your city to see how many of you can do that. Also check on sign placement, those types of things. As far as quality go, you will definitely have more quality products and items at an estate sale than you would a garage sale. Most of the time people are giving away at garage sales, um, definitely things that are, the masses are probably unwanting, unneeding, they're probably older, and I'm not saying that across the board. But estate sales not only tends to be that, but also things that are more current because sometimes when people are doing estate sales, they don't often know because of a death it could happen and therefore those items that they have that are modern, that are today, that are you know trendy, are unexpected in, in selling them and obviously you are the beneficiary of that. So you have the difference between um, also of where the, the shopping will take place. With estate sales, they're gonna be coming into your home. Garage sales, they could be coming into the garage or out in your yard. So that privacy factor, they're invading your personal space a lot more on the estate sale side. Now, some people ask me, you know, can you do an estate sale if you are closing off a back room or two? Absolutely. If, if signage is well placed and the doors are taped off, you know, that police type tape is excellent. That would be a really good way to do that. But anything, if you're cooking in the home or you're still doing laundry in the home, people are going to shop at everything laying out. So don't assume that you can live in the home and keep your dishwashing soap and your skillets on the stove for cooking breakfast that morning because all that's going to be fair game for anyone just to say, hey, I want to buy this. And it, the estate sale people or yourself are not really going to be able to keep up with that. People are just going to buy stuff. So anything you don't want sold, selling in the, in the estate sale needs to be put away. As far as high-end items in estate sale, you'll probably see more of those than you would a garage sale. So that's a little bit different as well. Garage sales um, are normally not as, um, should I say, as they don't have a wide range of, of products to sell as much as you will find in an estate sale. Um, I do believe that you can get more money for estate sales, and we're going to talk about that than putting on a garage sale. When you're talking about estate sale, there's not many people, well, there's not many people that will do a garage sale for you because it's just not profitable. You're going to find a kid or a neighbor. You might may have a few people that might do them uh, on the side for a little bit of profit, but you're not going to find a lot of people doing garage sales for you. On the other hand, you'll find a lot of people doing estate sales for you, and they're going to take a percentage of the overall sale. That can look like anywhere from 30 to 40% of the overall sales, and that's really unknown. So you have to understand there, 
they're evaluating how much stuff you have and we're going to talk about that in more detail as well so you can get help with the estate sales with the garage sales you really can't get a lot of help doing that so that's another difference as well so let's get into our tips um oh and i want to ask this or mention this one last thing you guys might be getting the idea that estate sales are really just for people that have passed away and their contents of their home are being sold off. That is really definitely majority of them, but that is not the case in so many situations. I would say probably about 30 to 40 percent, uh, and I might be wrong on that. That's just my guesstimation, that estate sales are happening because people are significantly downsizing. And you've probably seen on many of the TV shows the this tiny house. In fact, my father-in-law is looking at a tiny home. This is where someone is not passed away, and maybe they're in the prime of their life, and maybe they're getting a little bit older, but they're done dealing with the maintenance of a large home. They're done dealing with all the stuff and the, the knickknacks and tchotchkes that can come with a home that you've collected, and they're just wanting to be live by more of experience and enjoying quality of life versus things. You'll have a vast difference of, of different estate sales that you go in. And for example, the last estate sale that I was in, it was a beautiful home, a uh, single story home, very modern. The colors, everything was just like had been freshly painted, uh, fresh curtains. I mean, everything was very trendy and modern. And I asked the estate sale people, you know, why are these people leaving? Just out of curiosity, because it didn't look like your traditional uh, home that someone had uh, been in for 30, 40 years, and now they passed away. They said, well, this couple actually wants to start RVing. They, they're selling everything, including their home, and they're going to RV around the country. Of course, number one, I was a little envious, but number two, I thought, well, that's, that's another a reason that people do estate sales, is they're wanting to take that transition of their life and downsize it. So don't think you're always going just to get old stuff, and you will be surprised at how much of the new stuff is out there. In fact, all my dishes uh, recently came from that sale. I got Pottery Barn and Crate and Barrel dishes from that sale, and I think there's a lot out there that you can enjoy shopping from too. All right, so tip number one, and we're going to really home in here on the estate sale factor because many of you know what a garage sale entails. Look for good estate sale company. If you're in the market to find an estate sale company, you want to find a good one. A great site that you can go to to find one is called estatesales.net. When I first had access to that site, there were like seven to 8,000 people on that site that actually go there to shop and look for estate sale products. The last time I checked, and it's been a while, was like over 24,000, and that's probably in the 30,000 at least now. Great site where people actually watch for estate sales. They, they see the postings there, so estate sale companies will list their estate sales on that site as well as you can find estate sale companies to put on your estate sale as well. So estatesales.net. Plus you can see, as I mentioned, and you can narrow it down to the area that you live in. You can actually narrow it down to city zip code and you can have a great day shopping at estate sales. And I would actually recommend you go to an estate sale that of a company that you are considering hiring for yours and just sort of see how they run it, uh, what the security's like, uh, what what the checkout process is like, how, the, just the, how they leave it presentation-wise. That'd be a good way. So estatesales.net, that'll be a great place for you to look for an estate sale company. Tip number two, most companies have minimums of what of their expectations are for selling your items. Sometimes it's just not worth their time. Most estate sale companies start at about $5,000 of overall profit that your estate sale has to make. From that, they will take about 30 or 40%, and some of them will actually take an upfront supply fee or advertising fee at the beginning. Could be a couple hundred dollars. That will just, that 
couple hundred dollars will go to all the supplies, the paper, the, the pricing, as well as the advertising that they're going to do to put your, put your house out in the public eye and get as much sold as possible. Remember, they are working to get the most money from your items. So remember that they, the more money they make, the more money are in the more money the sell makes, the more money they make, and obviously the more money you make. So they have a minimum. Some, we, we called around and we have a list of estate sales that we have vetted for our clients. Some go up to 10, 15, and $20,000 because they're doing higher end estate sales. That's their niche. That's where they want to make their most profit. It's really difficult for a $5,000 overall estate sell Time you, you know, you, you divide that, let's say you make $3,000 and they've made like 2,500. Well, they've probably put in a week's worth of work depending on how unorganized your, the contents is being sold. They've got to price everything. They've got to make sure the manpower's there. They have to make sure they take out all of that down and pack it all up, whether uh, most likely donation. There's just a lot there. It's a lot of physical work and on your feet all day. So, you know, keep in mind that that's not a lot of money for them to make over that course of four or five days. Tip number three. In many cases, you can make more from an estate sale than a garage sale, and that is true, and here's why. Advertising is totally different, display is totally different, and presentation is totally different, meaning that they have the whole thing orchestrated even in security, not only how the space looks, the items are normally washed, clean, folded. They have someone maintaining all the tables and the contents to make sure people move things, things get put back. Then you have not only the presentation of the fact that you got sometimes security officers, I mean, off-duty uh, police officer or someone that's on their staff that's watching security. You have a, a checkout process, maybe two, uh, you have a floater going around asking questions. I mean, the 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 overall turning of questions and answers and and getting people checked out and through and the things look so I mean, all the glassware is together and that is completely many times staged in place settings to make sure that you sort of visualize what it looks like when the pieces in the collection is put together. So you will get more money from an estate sale than you will a garage sale. Their advertising is not only in the paper, but many, many websites online, including on the first tip, the estatesales.net. So you will make more money from an estate sale uh, if you obviously have good quality stuff. Tip number four, there are a few online estate sale companies that are worth checking out. Now, when I said online, I want to explain that. Your traditional estate sale companies are companies that come into your home and they just take over the areas, go through, tag, wash, clean, and put together your estate sale. But there's two companies in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. One does have other areas, other places. There's also one uh, that I'm not going to mention. You can obviously message me down below if you're in Oklahoma. I can definitely give you a suggestion there as well. But these are more like eBay type, online estate sales. They're becoming the new thing, and there's two that I want to really mention. One is local here to the Dallas-Fort Worth area. They have actually were a consignment type store, and they're still doing that, but they also sell things for people. Uh, this is called estatesales.org, and you can check that out to, to see. They will take your items, post pictures, and almost like an auction online. The other is called Max Soul. This is the one that I have used most frequently. This is one that we recommend to our clients above all. So what Maxold will do is they send a team into your home to take pictures of items that you are wanting to sell. Sometimes it could be a, a single item or maybe a grouping. They take it as is and they take a picture of it and write a brief description of what the viewer is looking at in that photo. They, then they put a price on it, and then they basically the auction, after they're all done, gets posted onto a website and live on the internet. So there are subscribers that are always looking for those estate sale finds. They are going in there looking at all these. I have seen 
coolers and bikes and dishes and I mean it's amazing that what you see and the stuff is not like you're like you're not having to go to these estate sales and find them they're actually in a picture just like on eBay the catch to this is is when you go and purchase it you are put your credit card in the system which would be at maxold.com they would hold your credit card when you find something you want, you bid on it, you bid on it. It's like a racing bid. And then the last person that bids the highest. Now, everything that 97% of everything sells on Maxo. I know these statistics because obviously I'm a little bit more knowledgeable in this company. So high rate of everything from an estate sale selling. The bids start out like at $1. So a gas grill starts out at $1 and it just keeps going. They can go, they can go high. Sometimes they go a little bit low. It just depends on the, the need for that. But it is absolutely a great website. The other catch is that when you purchase something on this online estate sales site, you have a window that you have to pick up your items. And ours specifically was on a Sunday afternoon, I think between like two and four. We had to go. We had to have our own manpower to load up everything. They didn't help you. They just sort of directed you where the items were, and you load it up. It's already paid for before you even get there. It's Actually, it's a very extremely organized process, and you get email with all the address and the content and pickup time, verification that you paid, and you just show them your phone when you walk in, and it says paid on there, and you go pick up your stuff. So it is not as intrusive as having a traditional estate sale. I would, I will definitely go that route when we decide if we don't do it ourselves. I would definitely hire a company that would do an online estate sale. Just check out how many subscribers they have. I don't know where Max sold is all. I know that I think they're down south more in the Houston area, but they do it here in the Dallas Fort Worth area. They don't do it yet in the Oklahoma City area. But again, if you are in Oklahoma, message me down below and I'll make sure that you uh, get a company down there that does the online ones. So we got traditional estate sales in your home and then online ones much like eBay that are less intrusive in your house. So tip number four, we got five tips today about estate sales. Tip number four, keep excellent records. It is in your benefit to get the most money out of all your household items. So the way to do that, keep records. If you've got jewelry or uh, an antique piece of furniture that you purchased a, a while back or something, you want to make sure you hold those records so when you do sell it, it's worth more because someone knows the history, how well it's cared for, what the original price was, how old it might be, a lot of things uh, even the definition of actually what someone's purchasing and the actual name would potentially be on that receipt as well or that invoice. So keep records because this is going to be in your best interest whenever you get ready to sell at an estate sale or anywhere. And that's going to help the estate sale people. Dig out all those records, give it to them, let them know what it's for. People love a great story. We were doing an estate sale one time and there was a beautiful trunk. And this husband had sent it over to his wife from the war and the, the household had you know passed away. This was beautiful. And we had a history to go along with this from one of the children. And we actually typed it up on a piece of paper and set it beside the uh, trunk. And people loved it. More interest was given to it. And eventually it did sell for a very good price. All right, our last tip, tip number five. There are some hard to sell things at an estate sale. So yesterday I was talking to one of our organizers in East Texas and we have a client that is interested in an estate sale there. Not through us, but through another company that we would recommend. I asked her, I said, you my our organizer, I said, have you ever gone to an estate sale? She said, actually, I went to one today. I, in, during our conversation, she goes, you know what? I noticed that the end of the estate sale did not sell. It was all the glass, the china, the crystal. She goes, they had tons of it there and it wasn't selling. Well, that means there's not a demand for it. So there's a couple things that I want to point out to you on what is not really going to bring you a lot of value. 
Number one, if it's old, does not mean it's worth a lot of money. Old is just sometimes old and therefore it's not worthy of someone paying a high price. It could mean the world to you. It could be in mint condition, but if it's not of interest to them or there's not the thing going on right now, you're not going to sell it for a good price. China. So all that wedding china that myself and everybody else has many received over the years, it's not a thing anymore. People don't like it. Do I use my china? Probably like once a year, but I like it. Am I going to get a lot of money for it when it sells? No. China's not going to sell. China cabinets. No, I, I don't even want that. I took that away a long time ago and put those dishes up into the cabinet. Crystal. Not happening. Decorative glass. Now, there is a glass called carnival glass that is definitely worth more, but it, and the piece has to just be right. But carnival glass was, would still sell. But the millennials and even my, I'm 48, and a lot of people don't even want that in their house anymore. They're like done with that. It's, it's just something that's not as convenient. They, again, they want more experiences than things. So decorative glass stemware, those little wine type glasses, I use them for like putting things and I do have a few, but people don't want very many of them. So stemware, uh, upright pianos or organs, that is hard to get rid of and brown furniture. There's a saying going around that brown is down, meaning that it's low down. No one wants to buy it. It's the sell of it is down. It's, it's just not what people want. Uh, a lot of people are going towards a more modern furniture, and I know it's not as quality made. I get it. That's just where we are. White, black, grays, natural woods. Those tend, tend to be the more popular and trending things happening right now. Um, collections of figurines. No one wants those anymore. Precious moments. Um, any kind of collection like that. You're just not going to get a lot of money for it. You might think, oh, this is collection or it's old. Again, you'll set your, set your expectations pretty low because of the fact that it's just not something you're probably going to get a lot of money from. Okay, so the next thing is, um, oh, I do have one more tip. Actually, I have six tips. So tip number six is things that do sell well at um, estate sales. Celebrity stuff, uh, military stuff, uh, old board games, vintage toys, those sell very well um, in the um, online estate sales. So let me show you, um, oh, let me just tell you, we had a Monopoly game in our home growing up with all the little bitty wooded figures. Still got it, and I want it. But that type of stuff would absolutely sell very, very well. Okay, on to the winner now. So hopefully you like, hopefully you like those uh, tips. Six tips today about the state sales. And if you have another tip, if you have a question, ask down below. I'll be glad to help you out on that. So on for our winner for last week. Our winner for last week was Mary Pat, and she won this cool key holder. I'm going to show you this again if you didn't see it last year. It's actually a water sprinkler top. And you can see here, when you open it up, your key fits right there. And this part right here would fit in the ground, probably the flower bed. You wouldn't want the uh, lawnmower mowing right over that. And this is going to go to Mary Pat for leaving a comment down below. So thank you. And uh, we will get that sent over to you soon, Mary Pat. All right. Our next, our giveaway for this week is a hook. Sounds pretty simple. But actually, it's a command hook. It is actually a waterproof command hook that uh, will hold up to five pounds. It's white. You don't have to put it in a shower or in a very um, moist room, like when you close the bathroom doors, how things get really moist on the wall. Um, you don't have to do that, but it is designed for that if you want to. So we're going to be giving this away today. It's a special series. It's called the Bass Series. You can see this at I don't know, like Home Depot and Lowe's and all that. And uh, they have tons of different types of hooks there. Okay, so let's get to our Tip Tuesday Tool of the Week. Okay, here we go. I come here. Let's see. Well, I'm, actually, I'm going to go ahead and pull it out. Okay, 
Tip Tuesday tool of the week. This is it. This is our large handle storage baskets. They are large size. I have two of these. And then I have a small one right here. They don't make a medium. So these are used in my pantry. I use them a lot in clients' pantries. You can get them at Container Store. The large ones run, let's see, $5, $5. And these run $4, $4. So how I use these is, let me see here. I put these on my pantry shelves just like this. And you use them to pull things out on your pantry that you can actually use and grab snacks, granola bars, things like that. If you need to use the smaller version, then you can do that. I actually have a, I measure the width, width of my uh, shelf in my pantry and I actually could not get three of these in there. So I had to go with two large and then one of the smaller ones, and it absolutely worked great. These are at Container Store. What you don't want to get are the ones that are thicker. Um, I don't say thicker, they're more of a um, acrylic, clear acrylic. Don't wanna get those unless you just wanna spend more money, but they are sturdier. I'm not saying don't get them, but they're more money, and definitely sometimes you don't need them. These would work just as well. Uh, and the others are like double the price. So these are a little bit of an idea you can get from the container store for you. Okay. All right. So let's look at, let's see, next tip Tuesday. We're going to be talking about medication clutter. So if you're looking at cleaning out all those medicine cabinets or you're looking at being under the sink or in the kitchen, we're going to talk about medication clutter. Um, we're also going to talk um, a little bit about what to do with medication that's expired. So tune in next tip Tuesday. All right. The other thing is I want to talk about a little bit about go services. Sometimes you're remodeling, painting, um, you are getting ready to do something in your home and you need the entire contents of that room completely packed up, call us. We can go in and declutter and pack or we can just come in and pack it up, yeah, really organized and get it ready for the remodel or the repainting. And then when you're done, we can come back and set it all up beautifully and even maybe rearrange the furniture or add a splash of different decor. We can make it look fabulous. So please be aware that we do provide that service as well. Um, all right, so the giveaway this week, again, is the command hook. Uh, it holds up to five pounds for a water area, but it doesn't have to go in a water area. If you want to win this, I want you to leave a comment down below uh, of any type of item that you would like to sell, like something unusual that you would like to sell. If you could sell something uh, and try to make some money of it in your home, I want to know what that type of item would be. Can't tell you why I'm asking, I'm just asking. So if you'll leave a comment down below of one thing in your home that you would like to sell, um, we will get back with you on that and maybe give you some a little bit of advice. So just leave a comment down below. And we did talk today about estate sales and garage sales. So I think, you know, you've heard last week about selling your clutter locally. Make sure you go back and listen to last week's episode. You will absolutely find out a lot of good stuff of how to get rid of your clutter and get some money for your clutter. Uh, also today, we're talking about the garage sale versus estate sale. So you take those two episodes today and last week's together, you got great content to making some really good decisions. Oh, one last thing. We have a document in our office that we use a lot for our clients. Uh, we call, call it a disposal option list. And that doesn't mean you're going to send it out back into the landfill. What it means is it's giving you the options of what you would do if you want an estate sale or you want to do all kinds of different ways you can sell things, it's giving the pros and cons of all those different types of options. You are welcome to have a copy of that. Just put a comment down below again that you want the disposal option list. Now we have, we have, um, I think we have two copies. We have one for East Texas, 
one for Dallas, Fort Worth, and we actually, I think, have one for Oklahoma City. So tell us the region that you're in so we make sure to give you the correct copy of that. But it's great because if you're weighing the, the evidence and weighing the facts and the, all the stuff that you find out, you may find out that it's best to donate it if you just can't find the time and the resources to do otherwise. So it's another option that we'll put everything together in one document for you. So, well, I'm Lorraine Brock with Get Organized, and don't forget to join us next week on Tip Tuesday. I'm actually going to be talking to you most likely from North Carolina next week. So, yeah, so we're going a little bit more remote and uh, get all those expired medications and all that kind of stuff, and we're going to talk about that next week, some really good ideas and how to get rid of some of that as well. But I'm Lorraine Brock with Get Organized, and thank you for joining us here on Tip Tuesday, where I bring you fun and funny practical tips each week on Tip Tuesday. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.